Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin, and we have brought back to the show our friend, a longtime friend. We've interviewed this brother several times, Dexter Pitts. And by the way, Dexter has his own podcast called I Am Pitts, and we obviously highly recommend and suggest and encourage folks to check it out. Brother, thanks a lot for coming in. Um, yeah, thanks for having me again. As always, brother, it's always a pleasure. Just, just today, just wanted to casually talk to you about a few things for you know next 10, 12 minutes. First of all, let's get us give us an update here on on the book. What's going on? Oh man, I'm I ain't gonna lie, I'm very excited. Uh, the guy I'm working with, he sent me my uh, copy of the ebook that what it's gonna look like, the layout, and everything. And it's, uh, I can't believe it. It's just like, you know, all the years of hard work and pouring my soul into my keyboard, onto the, you know, the Microsoft Word pages, my seeing my story come to fruition. It's, it's unbelievable. I just can't believe it's really happening. Okay. You know, it's, uh, we're, we're shooting for December, a December release. Oh, okay. So, In time for, for Christmas, you know, is it? Yep. Is it, yes, sir. Give yes, it out sir. as a Christmas gift. All right. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, I can't wait, man. Um, I still can't wait. I was just sitting there holding my phone. I do a lot of eBooks and I do a lot of audio books. And it was just, I was just looking at my own book on my phone, like <laughs> page count. I'm like, this is crazy. Like whoever thought I would write a book. I didn't even think I would do this. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, well, I bet you a couple of people who used to be rather prominent in your life didn't think so neither, or They'd prefer that you not done it at all. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. But you know, I took a different approach in my book. It, of course, I changed names and locations. Right. It, it, but I, what I did do, instead of putting everything on them and acknowledging their mistakes, which I do some, but I spin everything back to myself because you know the whole premise behind my last name, personal responsibility. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's easier for me to just write my story out, just trash everybody in my life, and like. You all are awful and horrible people, and I hope you die. That's the easy way to go, but that's not the way I went. And that's what I was going right. to start with, you know. But as I started writing, I was like, man, you, you're going to hurt people. And you're not going to accomplish anything, and people aren't going to understand you. You're not going to leave a good legacy for your kids just right. writing hate. And so I took it and, sp and spun it, and I made it about, you know, not them, but me. I needed to forgive. I needed to go forward. I needed to get better. And that's the, that's the hard thing to do, you know. Uh, and and you're absolutely right. You know, you're that's the wise, mature thing to do, a, which is a 180 to what to what I would have done. But uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, you had mentioned not too long ago that you had gotten a re, um, notification that you know, there's a possibility a Courier Journal reporter is. Uh, doing a little background check on you what do you think that's about you think it's connected to the book and what might be in it well i don't think else? she's with the uh courier journal she's with the okay the group uh, i forgot what they're called and i don't want to say her name or the group yet because i don't know her intentions but mm -hmm. from what i've seen and the, from what i've been told from other people this lady hates the police and what she does is write hit pieces on officers Wow. And so what I'm guessing is that she's probably got a hold of my podcast. I'm probably sure I got mm -hmm. a snitch on my Facebook page or somebody's heard it. Like, oh, my first thought, Corbin, when I saw the lady, you know, and, I, and then I started looking into her. My first thought when I saw her and her friends sitting around at a table looking at this black conservative podcast, my first thought was they, well, they were probably like, who taught this Negro to read and write and gave him permission to speak his mind? There you go. <laughs> That's my first thought. Because that is typically what the far left does. Heck, exactly. We saw what, did you see the video with Larry Elder the other day from California? Uh, was that where someone threw a, or tried Man. to hit him with an egg? Yes. A white lady on a bike wearing a blacked out gorilla mask with purple hair. Which is racist, by the way. Right. Black gorilla yeah, exactly. mask. Racist. <laughs> Extremely racist. Yeah, but we just going to let that slide. The news ain't yeah. going to say nothing about that. Right. But how dare me? How dare this <laughs> Uncle Tom actually write a book? And how dare he have a podcast and actually come speak truth to life about things going on in this country? How dare me? You know, uh, you know, when he um, that initial thing came out about his ex fiance, I was like, that's it. This guy's a threat. Yep. This guy's that's, a threat. They, that's they what happens. 
They picked up the kitchen, the kitchen sink. They threw that at him, the pot, everything. And so, oh, oh yeah. you know, so, you, you know, even though it was sort of disgusting what they did, and I don't know why in the heck she suddenly wanted to come out and say all this stuff. I mean, if she has some issues with the man pointing a gun at you, dude, you should have uh, done oh, something back there right then. I'll tell you why she don't have a, a problem, Corbin, because she's probably getting paid. Like, yo, look, we know y'all were together. How much is it going to take you to step forward? And this is the exact reason why I don't want to go into politics. Like the lady digging into me, literally, I have nothing to hide. Mm-hmm. All my ugly stuff is in my book. I've talked about it on my podcast. There's nothing mm-hmm. in my personal file. I work on the police department that's going to be like, oh, my God, this is a horrible person. Yeah. That's why I say I don't know what her intentions are, but if you're looking for a story, I can't help you. I mean, I got two ex-wives I can point you into. If you want some? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> No, hey, yeah, hey, hey, you want that? I can give that to you. But I mean, other than that, I mean, literally, I have, I, I talk about it on my podcast and my book. I had a negligent discharge with my shotgun when I, th- it was shortly after my mother died. I was not in the right headspace at work, shouldn't have been working. Mm-hmm. I've had complaints, but none of my complaints have been sustained. Well, excuse me, I had one. And the only thing I got in trouble was this lady who the store said she was stealing. And I verified that, that yes, they said, yes, she's stealing. So I take her upstairs, detain her, you know, and then I decide I'm going to place her under arrest. Well, store manager comes back. Well, like, oh, no, we don't think she stole. So, OK, I say, hey, you're not under arrest. You're free to go. And I'll let her go. And the, the beauty of it was I was so nice to this lady, Corbin. And when she leaves, I was like, man, was I disrespectful to you? She's like, no, he was very nice. And so mm-hmm. next thing you know, I get this lawsuit comes in and they're calling me like a psychopath and all this. And I was tortured her and all this stuff. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, the only thing I got in trouble for in the whole thing was I forgot to call my sergeant because once you tell somebody that they're under arrest, hmm. you have to okay. call a sergeant to tell them that they are no longer under arrest and they have to do what's called a blue team on the police department. I messed up because, you know, what? like I said, I make mistakes. That wasn't a mistake out of, you know, just to, just to make a mistake. That was a mistake. And I really I was ignorant. Man, we have 850 pages of policy. Yeah. You're going to mess up. I messed up, and you know I ate it on that one. I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> hey, you know? and I got a, I got a written reprimand for it. I'm okay. That's fair. But the other stuff, none of that was sustained. You know, I lost my badge once when I was what a rookie guy. <sighs> okay, other than that, a couple car accidents, man. That's all you're gonna find in my file. That's why I say I tell people I live my most authentic life, <laughs> and always keeping it real, man. Like it, mm. on my podcast, I'm not gonna lie. I have nothing to hide. So my hope is that she writes. If this is their intent. I hope her intention is to write the nastiest, meanest, ugliest hit piece on me. And people are like, who is this piece of garbage? And people are like, I want to hear what this guy's got to say. Right, and that they're right. flooding to hear my podcast and just giving me all the downloads. And I'm like, maybe this yeah. guy's a really good dude. So it's going to be good publicity for me and for my books. So I I don't have a problem with it. I was like, I welcome it. I'm surprised it took this long. I'm 30 episodes in. You know, I, you know one thing, uh, and I... And I try to say this to as many black conservatives I, I meet and encounter. I said, man, when you start messing with people's power and money, they're going to come after you with both guns blazing. So if you've got something in your background, and who doesn't have something in the back? Exactly. Who doesn't? You know, look, you know, here, you cast the first stone. Everybody, everybody starts turn around and walk on. But they're they're going to they're going to, you know, bring you out there and and portray you as if you were just, you know, Judas and Hitler and Pol Pot all wrapped up in, in one. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But, uh, and like I said, I don't know where Ted, but if that's what it is, I say bring it on, baby. I'm ready yeah. for the fight. Dexter Pitts ain't got nothing to hide. I've been doing this a long time. And because I operate in police with integrity and respect, you know, you'd be hard pressed to find anybody in the city that'd be like, that's a horrible officer. We hate him. Right. You'd be hard praised. I'm sure you could find one or two. God, Lord knows, have mercy. Especially during last year, during the I mean, riot, you well, could I mean, find a couple of disgruntled people. But now, look, look at Larry Elder. Look who, look who they had to pull in. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, big old California, and you can only bring up one person who who can, you know, who can say, oh, you know, he's he's Satan in disguise or something. <laughs> one allegation. All, right. all these people that's been around for years. No, they did yeah. the same thing with Donald Trump. Been around all these people for years, all these people, all of a sudden, he's a racist. Like, well, y'all was friends with the racists all this time, and all of a sudden, 
You know, it's, exactly. that's why I hate politics, man. <laughs> yeah. Ex- well, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I can see that. I can see that. Man, uh, but you've you not only been a police officer, podcast author, but you're in the military too, weren't you? Correct. Correct. And that's yeah. a lot of a lot of that's in the book. That's probably half of the book. You were there in a was it Iraq? I was in Iraq from uh, 2004 till I got blown up on January 2nd of 2005. Mm-hmm. But you know, the whole reason I joined the army, you know, was September 11th, and I wanted to go fight in Afghanistan. Yeah, but I didn't graduate in time. And then by the time I did graduate and join the military, go through training, Iraq was like the you know the new game in town, and Afghanistan was still on fire, but it was falling to the background and. Right. America was putting all their focus on Iraq, so I never got to make it to Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. But I have a lot of friends that did, though. What are some of your thoughts about, you know, what happened with Afghanistan? Mainly, I'm talking about, you know, the the army like turned and ran. President said, "See ya," and he ran off. And then the evacuation looked like it wasn't organized at all. <laughs> I mean, what what are some of your thoughts about that? Man, just seeing this whole, you know, this thing has been going on for 20 years. And to see America tuck tail and run in such a manner, in such a fashion, it's heartbreaking and embarrassing, man, because we are so better than that. Our troops are better than that. The people of Afghanistan deserve better. And the people that have died and shed their blood over there, these American soldiers, they deserve better than what President Biden gave us. And the one thing I don't like about what Biden's doing is he keeps saying, Yes, the the buck stops here, but, and you know what happens when somebody says but, but, right. but this is the plan I inherited from President Trump. Like, yo, homie, you are the president. This is your pony. This is your horse we're riding right here. Right. And you keep bringing up the last man. No, no, take responsibility. And there is no way that we, I'm not, I don't want to go down conspiracy theory, right? But to me, it's just like, how do we leave behind billions of dollars of equipment Knowing, hey, we can we have time. No, we don't. The Taliban does not control when the U.S. military comes and goes. That's mm-hmm. not supposed to be the case. Hey, like, hey, we need time to get our equipment. Well, y'all got to leave. Well, guess what? We're going to stay. Do something about it. You know, it's <laughs> right. just embarrassing, man, to see this go down and to see Americans left behind. Yes. yes. I, I, I'm just like, how is this happening? And not only that, we had Biden and his the, the Department of Defense turn over a list of Americans it, it gave it to the Taliban, trusting them to get our people out. The whole reason we have been there is because of them wanting to kill Americans. And they said, well, it's in their own self-interest. Of course it is. But they still hate Americans. That's I'm just I'm lost at the whole thing, Corbin. I'm telling you, man, it's it's yeah. upsetting. We deserve better. And this president, he's got to go, man. He's horrible. And, and now, now this, I will say this in defense of Biden. Everybody's like, he's negotiating with terrorists. You no, know, all our pre- Trump negotiated with the Taliban as well. Mm-hmm. So as much as I like to criticize Biden, I always say, hey, that's not fair because you know, Trump did that too. I remember he had them fly out to Camp David or something, and they actually discussed you no know, withdrawing troops and such and such, man. But you know, it's but still, regardless, this is a stain on our country, man. Absolute stain on our military. And, and, you know, I, I interviewed uh, Brigitte Gabriel. She's a national security analyst and expert. And she pretty much said what you said. I, I said my last question to her in my interview with her was, uh, okay, I'm going to give you three minutes with the President of the United States and his top advisors and cabinet, et cetera. What are you going to say? And she immediately didn't hesitate. Mr. President, I respect you. I respect the office, but I'm going to have to ask you to resign. I was like, whoa. <laughs> okay, well, please express. The cojones on her, man. Right, yeah, please express, you know, your true feelings here. Don't hide. Don't hide them. And then she, you know, sort of went from that thesis and basically said a lot of what you said. She says, I cannot believe that uh, the United States has that kind of fear from the Taliban that they would, we would just sort of run like that. Because uh, I noticed in your comment, you just said, hey, you know what, guy? We got this equipment here, and we have we need some time to move it out. And if you got a problem with that, well, you just have a problem. They say, figure it out. <laughs> I mean, that's it. We're going we're gonna to get this equipment out. And, you know, and it, and it, it would, I mean, do you think the possibility exists that that equipment 
could at some point in the future, if it stays there, kill Americans? Oh, definitely. If we ever have to go back, which uh, which is not out of the realm of possibility, but the waters in the Middle East have always been murky, but they just got murkier. But we now have China mm. coming into the country and Russia working in conjunction with the Taliban and actually recognizing them as a state government. Mm. You know, China says they, they are there for those rare earth minerals that are there. And, man, and not only that, they are going to reverse engineer all of our equipment. Mm. The Chinese are going to have us figured out if we ever have to go to war with them. They're going to have all the our military gear. And not only that, man, yeah. these the Taliban, when we were there, they didn't have all this equipment, man. These dudes were riding around on horses with AKs. That was it. Right. That was it. And now they have the most, some of the most advanced equipment ever. I mean, I just, I saw the list of what we left. I said, that, that's not a mistake. I said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but that does not seem like a mistake mm. to me. You don't just accidentally leave billions of dollars of equipment. And I'll say this, when I was in boot camp as a private, Corbin, we mm. were out on a field exercise. And know what happened? Mm. This laser fell off the edge of my rifle. I didn't realize it till we got back. Do you know what happened to me? Mm. Oh, I was threatened to the edge of my life, brother. <laughs> you do not lose as a lower enlisted, lower enlisted personnel soldier. You do not lose your equipment. We marched back to the field three oh miles. God. And we looked until that laser turned up. Wow. And then still, my drill sergeant, part of my language, had my ass, mm. he had my soul. You do not lose equipment. But lo and behold, nobody in the U.S. military stepping up to take responsibility. If this had been a and somebody enlisted or lower enlisted, man, that person's heads would have been rolling. That guy would have been done. But nobody, that's the thing, nobody has stepped up to take true responsibility of this. It's unacceptable. And, and, and we left behind some serious stuff. You said uh, helicopters, just regular helicopters? Oh, oh yeah, helicopters. Be- man, we've lost behind, you know, Humvees or mine-resistant vehicles. Thousands of pairs of night vision goggles. Now they, hmm. now we used to own the night. That's what we always said in the military. We own the night. We can go and fight at night because our night, you know, our capabilities are night vision goggles and lasers, man. Hmm. I remember we had these, uh, the night vision goggles and these things back in the day called pack fours. If man, I put those night vision goggles down and I hit that pack four laser, there's a laser that shot out from that rifle hmm. and whatever I pointed it at, I could shoot it and, hit, and I could hit it dead on man. in the dark at night. But now the Taliban has that. Now, it's absolutely crazy, man. And wow. we just gave it all to them and just left. You know, of course, some people are saying, you know, we destroyed some of the equipment and the Taliban is not going to be able to keep up the, you know, the maintenance on the equipment. But that don't even matter because China's there now. They have people that are going to come yes. in and help them keep this stuff up to date. Yes. Yeah, I can. Yeah. We, you know, we set ourselves up for failure and we keep doing this stuff. Like I said, we are the reason that the Taliban exists anyway. When Russia invaded in the 80s, what did we do? Hey, we saw the threat of communism coming. We started pumping money into them and taught them how to fight. Gave them all of their equipment. Beat the Russians. And now we're going, what do we do? We created them and now they came back at us. And we've been fighting them for the last 20 years and now we just gave them more stuff. Gave more stuff. And if we ever have to go back, it will be a bloodbath. Folks, this is uh, Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. Um, check out my website, uh, booktalkwithcorbin.com, where I have uh, good interviews like this um, with Gabriel uh, Brigitte, a national security uh, expert and New York Times author. I also have an interview with uh, Mr. Greenfield, who has been who is raising some uh, issues, questions, concerns about the uh, you, our military leadership. He says they seem to be more interested in dealing with this whole woke culture than winning wars. Uh, Pretty powerful statement right there. We have with us right now Dexter Pitts. He's an author, podcaster. I am Pitts. That's the name of his podcast. Brother, we got time for just for a couple more um, questions here. Are there any other things that's happening that's concerning you about, uh, you know, about the, the president, the economy, anything like that? You know, the biggest thing right now I'm learning more and more is that, you know, things that happen on the national level are concerning. But what's happening on the local level is even more concerning. And mm. we the crime in this city is just out of control. And the problem, Corbin, we don't have any officers. 
And I'm actually got, about to do my own podcast, and I'm going to discuss it on there. But I want to tell you, so uh, I believe it was last weekend or the weekend before. So between Portland, Russell neighborhood, downtown in New Loop, we had six police officers and two sergeants to work. Mm. And while we were working, we had an incident where a lady and her daughter got jumped. And then somebody fired a shot. Nobody got shot, thank God. Yo, but we're there dealing with that. And the next thing you know, we get a call that there is an injury accident at 11th and Chestnut. And that somebody's hurting it. There are people sprawled out on the sidewalk. We couldn't go. We couldn't get there. So by the time we got there an hour later, man, these mm. people were irate yelling at us. And we were public enemy number one. You all don't care about us. Why does y'all take so long? And my buddy, he's a great guy, but he was getting flustered. And, you know, I had to step in and tell him, look, I got this. So I started talking to the lady. And I told her, like, look, man, we are, I'm sorry that it took us so long, but we don't have enough officers right now. We don't. I'm sorry. If I could have been here sooner, we would have. What y'all need to do is y'all need to go complain to the mayor's office and Metro Council because this is unacceptable. Citizens in this city, taxpaying citizens at that, should not have to wait an hour for a response from police. You shouldn't. That's unacceptable on any level. But brother, brother, aren't we hearing from some of these civil rights groups and civil rights activists that we need to defund the police? Of course. And you know what happens when we defund the police? We're seeing it now. <laughs> right. Black bodies are laying everywhere and sprawled out. More children and women have been shot and killed in Louisville this year than any other year. We're expecting them to hit 200 homicides. Man. I was on a homicide scene the other night and I just looked down. This guy's half his head's blown off and I'm just looking at his brain and watching him die slowly. And, and it's become so normal now. You, I don't even feel like I've been doing this 12 years and I always have a piece of me that just, feel, you know, just recognizes what people feels, you know, feels for him. But it's just so constant and repetitive now. It's almost every day you, you can guarantee a shooting. And now we got this young black kid here in Louisville that's been kidnapped and held for ransom. And I'm like, this was, this isn't even new. They had another one that happened last year when I got back, man, they, they took this African guy, held him for ransom. They didn't get their money. They plucked him full of holes and then dumped them over by the uh, LMPD horse stables over mm. by Iroquois park last year. So this is another hostage thing going on now. And this is just constant, but not just here. Crime is starting to spill out of Jefferson County into the adjoining counties, man. We got people getting carjacked by young juveniles from here over in Hillview in Bullitt County. Mm. All this, the crime is starting to spread beyond our control. And the crazy thing is, it's a lot of being done by a lot of young kids. But guess what? We don't have any recourse for when we catch these kids and these, you know, and these committing these crimes. We have to drive them to Odom County now because we don't have a juvenile detention center here in Louisville for our youth. What, why is that? It's, it's... They shut the center down about, I believe, a year or two ago for because uh, just because of finances, they said. And now that we don't have a place to take these kids, we have to have so much, so much paperwork and stuff to do to get these kids under arrest and take them and lock them up in Odom County. But when you do that, that takes an officer off the street when we're already short. It is a mess. It is just a slow, steady okay. decline. Based on what you just said, I cannot make any sense of any knucklehead who would talk about defunding the police. I'm just not. But yeah, man, it's a, uh, you know, it's very, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know, but they're saying defund the police, but we're actually getting ready to vote on this new contract here on the PD. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the raise is a, the first year of the contract is a 9% raise and the mm -hmm. second year is a 3% raise. And of course, you know, they're putting all the stuff in there that they want from the police officers. And my feeling, I'm, I was a hard no on the contract, but now I'm not so sure I'm a no on the contract because of the reforms that our FOP fought for that they were able to leave out. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff that the uh, that people wanted in the contract that we were able to keep out of it. So the, I believe it's the 409 project here in Louisville. Mm -hmm. And they were wanting a whole lot of stuff in there that they didn't get put in there. And they're talking about it on their Facebook page, man. You know, they, these people just want to control the police. But I'm like, well, you know what? If you want these reforms, you're going to have to pay me more than 12 percent. You know, because what we went oh. through last year in this city, brother, 12 percent is nice. But like I said, I'm not here for the money. I don't have to worry about the money. It's not going to make me a bit of difference if we get the 
get, you know, if we get the money or not. Right. But I am more so concerned about my brothers who need the money. And man, what we went through last year, honestly, uh, uh, I feel like anything less than 20% <laughs> is not going to mm. cut it. You know, because I mean, we went, we went through hell, yes, absolute hell last year. Yes, I don't ever want to go through that again, ever well, again. Well, I, I guess I should say I'm only mm. speaking for myself, but I do believe I'm speaking for many, many people here in the city of Louisville. Uh, we want increased funding for the police, the LMPD, Louisville Metro Police Department. We want more police officers on the street. And we want, you know, the, the police officers, the men, women, we don't care what color they are. We want them trained. We want them protected. And we want them to know, daggone it, I don't know about what all these other left-wing Looney Tune guys are talking about, I just want to be safe. That's it. That's and I all want other people to be safe. You know, just you you go do your thing, I go do my thing, and I want to have to worry about getting in a car accident, serious car accident, and I'm laying around waiting for the police to come respond to it. Or what's happened recently around here, some guys had thousands of dollars of equipment stolen. Finally, oh, a de detective shows up and he says, I am swamped with work. Yes, sir. I don't want to hear that. We are all. Yeah, you don't. You want your stuff back. Right. right. <laughs> but unfortunately, I tell people, man, like, hey, you know what? Honestly, like, man, should I do a report? I'm like, honestly, probably not going to get it back. Bro. I'm sorry. It's just it's just the way things are right now. Like homicide, man. These dudes. I mean, everybody on the PD is just extremely overworked. I told man, we're all tired, yeah. tired, man. It's right. it's rough, dude. I ain't going to lie. I saw the post office was hiring the other day, brother. It, I almost yeah. went. I almost went, yo, but I was like, no, nah, I don't want to abandon the fight just yet. I want to. I, I want to see this thing through. I've already left yeah. once, but you know, it's tempting because it's like I don't have to do this. I don't need the money, but I, I believe in you know. I believe in my job. I love my police department. I love LMPD. I love wearing that uniform. I love the guys and women and the gals that I serve with. You know, our commanders, our leaders. I love them all. You know, they're flawed, but I mean, we're all flawed, but man, we got to do better. We need, and I say what they're proposing is not going to be enough to draw people in to want to come work here and to want to keep people to work here because guys right. have left this department to go make less money because they get more peace. Well, well, unfortunately, we're going to, we're going to have to end on that, that, uh, that note. Folks, this is Book Talk with Corbin. I'm your host. Um, check out my website, booktalkwithcorbin.com. But definitely check out the podcast, I Am Pitts. Learn more about this brother, his thoughts, his views, his opinion, his life experiences. And please be looking out for his book. The title of the book is I Am Pitts, right? Yes, sir. Memoirs of a Black American Patriot. Great. Fantastic. So, all right, man. Let me get here. Go Thanks on. again, Corbin. I appreciate you, brother. All right. Appreciate you, too. And our community appreciate you, man. Yes, sir. You take care. All right, brother. You bet.